Part three of polynomials, we're going to talk about special products. And basically, most of them we're going to be doing is squaring binomials. So this is a really key little skill that you need to master. And by the time we finish this video, you're going to be really good at it. So if we looked at x minus 2 squared, you know right away that that means x minus 2 times x minus 2. And most of you would probably now know how to expand this using either FOIL or multiplying each term in one bracket by every term in the next bracket. So if I were to expand this, I would get x squared and then I would have minus 2x and then I would have minus 2x again and then plus 4. And simplifying that, I end up with this. Okay, so what's the easier way to do this? How can we make this faster? And what I want you to think about are two things. When you square a binomial, so that's squaring a binomial, you get a trinomial. So that means you're going to have three terms when you're done. See, one, two, three. We had a binomial squared. Now the other little saying I want you to say with me and then memorize it and keep it in your brain forever and ever is something I learned when I was in high school. See, math really doesn't change at all over time, does it? That's these three little things. Square, twice the product, square. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. Square, twice the product, square. Take a look at what we did up here. When I expanded this, you see how this term here is this squared, and this term here was this number squared. So minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. In the middle, we have minus 2x and minus 2x. So this is twice the product of these two terms. So when I say twice the product, I want you to say, what's x times minus 2? And you would say minus 2x. What's twice that? Minus 4x. So there's your middle term. Square the first term, twice the product of these two terms, and square the last term. So I'm going to run through a whole bunch of these, and I want you to be with me while I'm going through it, and I want you to say what you think the answer is, and I'm not going to be able to tell if you're right or not, but you'll catch on. So let's take a look at this one, x plus 3 squared. So if I square the first term, x times x is x squared. What is the product of x and plus 3? So x times plus 3 is 3x, twice it is 6x. And square the last term, 3 squared is 9. Okay, so let's look at this one. Square the first term. 2x quantity squared, so take this and square it, you would get 4x squared. What is the product of 2x times minus 1? You will say minus 2x. What is twice that? Minus 4x. And square the last term, minus 1 squared is plus 1. Now something else you should be noting as we square these binomials is that the last term, when you square, this number here is always positive. And you should know why, because if you square a negative, you get a positive. If you square a positive, you get a positive. So this term always has to be positive when you're squaring a trinomial, or binomial, sorry. So this one, square the first term. What is 3x and square it? So you have to square the 3, you have to square the x. So 3 times 3, 9, and x squared. What is the product here? 3x times 2, 6x. Twice it? I heard you. You said 12x. <laughs> and square plus 2, and I get 4. 
So you don't need to write this out. I see so many students in grade 11 and, and they'll expand it like this. And that's way too long. Square, twice the product square, square, twice the product square. Say that every time before you go to bed at night and you will be nailing this in no time. Square the first term, what is 4x? So you have 4x times 4x, 16x squared. What is the product of 4x and minus 5? You said minus 20x, you double it, minus 40x. Square the last term. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. All the last terms are positive. This one, square the first term, 6x squared. 6 squared is 36x squared. Hopefully you know your times tables. The product of 6x and 2 is 12x, twice it. 24x and square the last term. Squared, twice the product, squared. Square the first term, 3x squared, 9x squared. The product of 3x and minus 6 is minus 18, double that, minus 36x and minus 6 squared is 36. And again, notice that all these terms are all positive, no negative. Now, what about the other signs in here? Well, if this is negative, this is negative, right? Because if I take the product and I get a negative number and I double it, it's still going to be negative. This one here, this is positive. So if I double two numbers that are positive, it's still going to be positive. See, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative. So that's another thing you should note that's happening when we're squaring our binomials. Okay, so let's run through these really quickly. Squared, twice the product, minus six, double it, minus 12. Square plus, minus three, you get plus nine. Square four x for me, 16 x squared. The product, eight x, double it, 16 x and square 2. 7x and squared, 49x squared. The product is minus 14, double it is minus 28x. Square the last term, plus 4. 5x and squared, 25x squared. The product of these two is 15, so 5 times 3 is 15x, double it, 30x, and square the last term. What is 4x squared? Well, 16x squared. The product is minus 8, double it, minus 16x, and square the last term. There, see, you can do these really fast. You don't need to be expanding it like we did initially here. That's just when you're squaring a binomial, you want to remember what's written in green here. Now I have another page to go, but before we go, I want to make sure that you see that I put some homework here from the Math Power 10 that I will again leave the link to and go to these pages for some more practice. Okay, now the product of the sum and difference. This is something that you want to be able to spot this pattern when you're doing some expansions because it, it'll just save you some time. If you don't catch on to this, it's not the end of the world. You would still use your FOIL method or expanding, but we're going to show you that it's really a simple little thing that's going on here. So let's try it by long expansion first. So I'm going to do these two and then these two. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times minus 6 is minus 12x. 6 times 2x is plus 12x and minus 36. So you see what's happening here? These terms are going to cancel each other out. Minus 12x plus 12. So I end up with 4x squared minus 36. So what's that showing, showing you here is that you're ending up with um, 
you're only squaring this one and you're squaring this one or multiplying these two or multiplying these two if you want to put it that way. So 2x times 2x and plus 6 times minus 6. So it only works when these are the very same 2x plus 6, 2x minus 6. And when we do our factoring, we're going to be going from this backwards to this. So keep that in mind while you're working with these. So what you, um, what you should be doing here, well, let's try this one here. So if I multiply this, let's do it the long way first, and then we'll see the pattern again. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then 2x times 3y is plus 6xy. And then these two multiply give me the minus 6xy. And minus 3y times plus 3y is minus 9y squared. And again, these two terms will cancel out. And I'm left with 4x squared minus 9y squared. So the pattern that's happening here is that if you have a plus b times a minus b, you end up with a squared minus b squared. And this, when we work it backwards, is going to be called a difference of squares, and it will factor to this. Factoring will be next. Okay, so watch for these patterns. It'll save you some time. So let's go to some simplifying expressions. And again, this is a bit of an extension of what we did in, I think, um, the last lesson. So let's look at what we've got here. So I have three times, read it, okay? Three times this whole thing squared. Now remember your bed mass rules that you have to square before you can multiply. So bed mass, remember, says brackets first, brackets, exponents. So I have brackets and then exponents. So this exponent takes precedent over multiplying by three. So if you have something in the brackets that you can simplify, in this case, I can't add one to three M and get something different than what I already have in here. So nothing to do inside the bracket. Now I do the exponent. So I have to square this and then I will do the multiplication, and finally I'll do the subtraction of whatever is over here. So you might want to put a little bracket around this one. Brackets are free. You can use them as much as you want. It's not going to make any question wrong. Okay, so I'm going to leave the 3 here, and now I'm going to square this binomial. And now I bet you're going to say square twice the product square. So 3m squared is 9m squared. The product is 3m, twice it, 6m, and square the last term, I get 1. Now this little pattern here is like this, right? I have plus and minus, and the two terms on either side are the very same. So that means if I expanded this, I would square these two, so 4m squared, and multiply these two, minus 1, and I'm done. Now notice I left them in brackets because there is a minus sign here. Don't be skimpy with brackets around minus signs because you now know you have to subtract everything in the bracket, right? Okay, so now I'm going to expand this, so I'm just going to multiply everything by 3. So 27m squared plus 18m plus 3 minus 4m squared plus 1. Okay, watch that negative sign. And finally, I'm just going to gather any like terms. So I have 27m squared minus 4, so that's 23m squared. And I only have this little lowly 18m by itself. And I have plus 3, plus 1, that's plus 4. And there you go. Okay, don't forget bed mass rules. Okay, and the last question I want to do for you is this one here. So I have something squared, something squared. And then I'm going to multiply by 3, this one by minus 4. Ooh, ooh, watch this, watch that. Big note. 
Okay, so let's leave the 3 and square this binomial. Square the first term. a times a, a squared. The product of these two terms is going to be minus 2ab. Twice it, minus 4ab. And square the last term, plus 4b squared. Okay, don't forget we still have another one to do here. So I leave the minus 4, so I'm subtracting 4 times what's in this bracket, squared. So square the first term, 2a quantity squared is 4a squared. The product is 2ab times 2, that's plus 4ab, and square the last term. Okay, so now all I have left to do is multiply the brackets by the constant out front here with its sign, and then I'm going to gather the like terms. So let's go. 3 times this one, 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 4 is 12, b squared, minus 4 times 4a is minus 16a squared, minus 4 times plus is minus 16ab, and minus 4 times plus b is minus 4b squared. Okay, know how they changed all the signs. They were all positive. Now they're all negative and multiplied by 4. So now all I have left to do is find the like terms. So let's, um, we've got a 3a squared and a minus 16. So I'm going to write that one down right first. So I have minus 13a squared. My ab's, I have minus 12 minus 16, so that's going to be minus 28ab, and I have b squared, so the last ones, I'll just put little x's under them, so I have plus 12 minus 4, that's going to be plus 8b squared. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out in figuring out how to expand these questions properly, and by the end of this lesson, like I said, you should be really good at squaring binomials. Maybe go back to the start of the lesson and try to find the answer before I wrote it down. Um, square, twice the product square. This is a really important little trick. It's not a trick. It's, a, it's the pattern that is happening when you square a binomial that saves you writing all these lines here. You don't need two lines. You just need one. And this is a skill that you need to be fast at. You don't want to be wasting time writing out brackets and doing all your little foil work when you don't need to be doing that, especially when you get into higher grades. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out. And this is um, the third lesson on grade 10 polynomials. Subscribe, tell all your friends that I'm now doing the grade 10 curriculum because I know there's a lot of people out there who need extra help.